Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today, I'm talking to everybody, but I'm especially talking to the guys that fish from the shore because today's video is going to apply to you more than some of our previous stuff. This really is something that's going to help you, but it will help everybody. What I wanna talk about is establishing patterns on the water so that you can consistently catch fish. The way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna walk you through what I just did the last couple of hours here on the lake. Uh, to give you some background, we're on a lake where the water has been rising. We had a storm about a week, week and a half ago. The lake rose about three feet. And that's going to cause a lot of confusion because we started to get some stain to the water. It's not chocolate milk, it's not muddy water, but it definitely has a heavy stain compared to before. It's got about a foot and a half to two feet of visibility which is a, it's kind of an in-between. And we got here so late after the storm, you know, it's had a week, week and a half to settle that you really don't know how the storm has played into it either. But for Tim and I, when, when we've put time in on the water year after year, what we found is that for us, where we are in the world, when you start seeing that rising water in January and February, that pretty well signals the end of the winter mentality. You start thinking pre-spawn. Now you might be jumping the gun a little bit, but you wanna start heading that direction. South of us, you know, guys down around the border lakes, those guys, you might be seeing that same thing. You start getting that rising water, December, January, you start thinking, and guys farther north, you just adjust. You know, February, March, March, April, but when you start seeing that spring rising water, that tells you what's coming. So when I get those circumstances, I immediately go to this box. Very, very simple. There's two things in here, spinner baits and jigs. That's all that's in that box. That's my rising water box. Those are the two things I wanna start with. Now, I've still got a boat full of tackle. That's where I wanna start because that's going to tell me very quickly what the fish are doing. That jig, I can get in and out of that shallow cover, see if those fish move up. And then the spinner bait, I can run the whole gamut. So today, here's what happened. I got on the water. Now, I left my electronics at home and this is why it applies to you bank guys because I don't know my water temp. I don't know my depth. All I know is that I have rising water and it's fairly stained. So how do you adapt? What do you do? How do you find and catch fish? Here's what I did. First thing is I picked up the jig. Now it's a bluebird sky day. I'm under a fog bank. So keep that in mind. This is not a storm. This will lift and we'll have bluebird in the afternoon. So the fish are going to behave like it's a sunny day, even though they're under that fog. So first thing I picked up that jig. I went up shallow and I started firing that jig just at about a 45 degree angle going down the shoreline, just covering water with a fairly neutral jig. You know, that's super matte brown. That's one of the colors that I enjoy throwing. Uh, still a finesse jig because it is cold water, so I don't need a giant hook to wrench on those fish unless they're burrowed into the cover. Then I will so I can get them out, out of the brush or out of the trees. So I started with that jig and it was not happening. I spent 20, 30 minutes with a jig fishing from zero to 15 feet of water, roughly. I mean, I don't know exactly what I'm fishing. Uh, but just covering water, going down the bank, it's not happening. So I picked up a big spinner bait. Picked up a three quarter ounce spinner bait, double willow, because again, it's not chocolate milk, silver blades, but I'm getting flash, I'm getting movement, I'm covering water. And I went three quarter ounce because that allows me to throw right up to shore and I can fish right tight to the bank if those fish did move up with that storm. If they're in the cover, I can bang my way through it, but it's a three quarter ounce bait, so I can also let it drop afterwards and follow that shoreline down. I'm fishing on fairly steep bank. I'm guessing that the boat is sitting in 30, 35 feet of water. So I've got that spinner bait going down the bank. Sure enough, three short strikes over about a 20 minute period. I don't get any of them. The last one, I'm throwing that spinner bait with a 4.8 Kitek on it. That last one bit the tail off of that thing. Just clipped it clean off. That told me everything I needed to know. Getting those short strikes, that's kind of putting the pattern together, but getting bit off told me everything because all three bites happened. I'm falling down the bank. Okay, I'm, I've got a slope, 
and I throw my spinner rate up shallow and I'm fishing down slope, as that spinner rate would lift at the end, that's when I got all three bites. So that told me either my fish were mid depth and they were following it and eating it on the turn, or my fish just happened to be at that exact depth where I was turning and that's why I was getting bit. One of those two things applied, but I just eliminated all that upper water. So what's happened is the fish followed up as the water was rising, but then it stabilized and it is still cold. It is still January, so they immediately backed back down. So now I've established they're not on the bank. I started on the bank, got that out of the way. Now I know they're down there somewhere in about that 20, 30 foot range, but they're not eating that spinnerbait. They're hitting it, they're not committing. My guess, they can see it. They either can see it too well or the fish are too small. Having fished here before, my assumption is not that they're too small. My assumption is that they're getting too good of a look. So they're aggressive, they're coming up to get it, but then they see it, you know, it's bright, it's chartreuse, it's blue, it's got big blades, and they're just kind of nipping at the back end. So I immediately cut it off and I tied on, same thing, that's a Matt Allen swim bait head, three quarter ounce, 4.8 Kitek and I fire back out there because now I'm thinking I've kind of got a depth established. They're clearly on bait fish. They weren't on a craw, at least not shallow. So I switch over and I start throwing that swim bait head and I gave it about 15, 20 minutes, never got touched. Covering back through the same area where I just got bit on the spinner rate. And I know I didn't put a hook in any of those fish. So with enough time, they should feed again. This is not happening. So what that tells me They'll eat a spinner bait, they won't eat a bear swim bait. Well, what is the difference? The difference is flash and color. That's the difference. Because my clarity is still around a foot and a half, color is probably not my issue. It's probably flash. So that's where I go here. I go under spin. Slightly smaller, 4.3 Kitek, half ounce under spin. Now I'm getting away from that bright, flashy spinnerbait with big blades. I'm getting away from that. I'm getting that natural profile, that natural look, but I still have some flash because my theory is that the swim bait, while it looks good, down deep, 20, 30 feet in that fairly stained water, they're struggling to locate it. So you go to that spinner on that underspin. I start fishing that same stretch again immediately pick a fish up. Now you've got a pattern. You, you've established a depth range. I started fishing parallel too, and that's when I picked that fish up. So now I've established my fish are between somewhere in that 20 to 28 range. And I'm only gauging that by how long it's taking my bait to sink. Because again, I don't have a graph with me. You could be doing this exact same thing standing on shore. You don't know depth. You don't know water temp, but you can look down, you can see clarity, and you adjust. You start fishing parallel, and you work your way down, and then you switch your types of baits on your way down until you find those fish. So I picked one up on that underspin. First thing I did was set it down right away. Put that down, and I immediately picked the jig back up. And why would I do that? Simple. I've established my depth. I know exactly where my fish are sitting. I can take that jig and fish right back down that same depth range, cover water more slowly because the water's still cold. So in theory, if the fish will eat an aggressive, a moving bait, they should eat a slow moving bait too. They should eat that jig. And now I know my right depth range. See, before I was fishing too shallow. Now I'm at the right depth, in theory, throwing the right thing but it didn't happen. And that is when we finally dialed in the pattern. That tells me my fish are in the 20s. They are after bait fish. They are not after craws. They want a bait fish profile. They want to run it down. And I know that because of clarity, I still need flash. Now I have a boat full of tackle and I only have one bait that I need to be throwing. That is how you establish a pattern. I can now take this bait anywhere on the lake on a similar bank, or if you're on a small body of water, stick to where you're at, but you wanna maintain that same sort of 
structure and that same sort of depth. So today that would be steep chunk rock bank, outside corners in the mid 20s. And I can take my one bait, focus there, and I know when I come to each spot that if those fish are there, they should take a shot at that bait. I'm no longer changing baits. I'm no longer changing rods, trying to establish pattern. We've got a pattern. We can just focus on fishing and I've got the whole rest of the day to do that. Hope that helps you guys. It should, it should help you establish patterns because you can do this all the way into the spring. Maybe the baits will change, but the concept is the same. You make little adjustments until you've got it fine tuned. And then once you're fine tuned, stop fooling around. Don't even branch out from there. Run that pattern until it stops working and then start looking again. That should help you guys put some more fish in the boat, put some more fish on the bank. Hopefully it will. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you.